Let's see if we can find a landing spot. Whoa! Creatures galore! Hello everyone, Thranx is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, where we have more planets to check out in this system, as I'm very quickly starting to really, really like this system. Uh, let's see, we talked a little bit about in the last planet about why these two are really neat and have a neat relationship. Here is even sort of a more Earth-like one with a different uh, sky but a lot of storms. And then we have these other three planets with water, of one of which was visible from this moon that, uh, yeah. Right over here by the space station, I believe this is the toxic planet. And then look at those. Look, just... Just look at that. It's almost like they're they're like perfect little glossy billiard balls even. I don't even these these perfect little cloudy marbles. I don't know. I think we need to start jumping around various planets and see what the rest of this system has. We've already checked the space station. It doesn't have necessarily any notable multi-tool uh, modules. What we have not done is we have not uh, summoned a derelict freighter in this system. And that could be a neat way uh, to just, just to kind of check the box of learning everything about this system and what it has to offer just before we make a final decision. But I'm, I'm so far leaning towards it. Yeah, look at this noxious planet with these continents. Let's hit the coastline of this bay and get a feel for both. Let's let's see what this terrain has to offer. What how it's going to speak to us, right? what we're dealing with a bit of a storm right now perhaps with this lavender sky and we've got these sandy beaches with is this a cliff overlooking the water here oh that's fun oh oh this is no oh, no did we we've, we've really taken our ship into this cave this is this is gonna get us in trouble we need to turn around yeah, I know, I know, I know. My living ship is afraid. What have you done? What have you done to us? Okay, woo! <laughs> scary, scary. That's a pretty neat formation, though. With the purple sky. All right, let's go find a structure. Oh, it's a trading station. This is great. We'll get to see what the local ships are for this area. Just get an idea for, um... Ooh, toxic monsoons. Okay, so a bit of weather here on this particular planet. Not enough to get storm crystals. Just, uh, just enough to have to keep your toxic battery charged up and ready to go. These explorers. Yeah, look at that. That's those could be really neat with a different cockpit. I do wish you could build your own ship. All right, well, shoot, do we have anything to sell? It doesn't look like it. Let's go ahead and we'll talk to Merchant Romemar. Hello, friend, you'll help Gek, yes? Something thing, only need genetic details for something. The Gek looks at me with hope, their trustworthy eyes and beak beaming as I approach. They gesture towards me with a data pad as if to make a request. Um, I'd like dialect help, actually. 
they babble, whispering symbols in my mind of the delicate pheromone. Uh, teach me a teach me a gek symbol. Yeah, the gek word for home. Kind of a cool hauler. Uh, no, no, never mind. It's got that offset asymmetrical cabin. What? That flight station? That's weird. Look at that. <laughs> How did I not notice that at first? It was from the angle, but... Yeah, like from here, it, you can almost tell something's not quite lined up with it, and then you come over here. That's peculiar. Well, being a Gek system, I know they're going to have more haulers than anything else. But... Armored Clam. Oh, are we that close to the water? Or is there a cave? Cave that opens up to the water. Oh yeah, cave's right there. Kind of neat. I don't know if I'm going to spend much more time on this particular planet, though. I don't really see an abundance of salvage data modules. I don't... What, there's there's a couple... Maybe we should go hit the ocean. Let's go see what the ocean looks like. Oh, look at that hauler. What are those, antennae? No, they're like little wings. Reminds me of the one we had there for a time. Oh good, the storm's clearing. I wanted to stay here for a second longer and see if we could see a fighter that lands. See what kind of fighters are in this area. I think we've seen some explorers. Might as well grab this condensed carbon. Oh yeah, there's a fighter with the circular wing. Oof. Oof. Look at that explorer. <laughs> I'm sure somebody somewhere sees that and thinks, that's awesome. Maybe, maybe not. The hauler is kind of cool, though, with the colors. Uh, but not, not to my jam. Water appears rather clear, but yeah, I'm I'm thinking we go look at another planet. I want to see the desert planet. Truth be told, yeah, nothing there. All right, I want to go see this desert planet. Every planet can offer something if you have an open mind. Some just offer more uh, more than others. Yeah. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, this one's far away, too. Dark, rocky looking terrain with with red water. The sky looks to be Yeah, that's sort of lavender. Obviously some particulate that's cycling through the air and the liquid on the surface but is not actually water, it's either not hydrating or the sediment is causing it to not give the water readily available to the flora and fauna here, and that's why it's a desert. 
Got some mesas and plateaus, okay. Oh yeah. Look at that thick atmosphere. There's a lot of some kind of particulate in the in the atmosphere here. And it's obviously blocking up all the moisture. Although we have we have some trees. Wow, it's absolutely very arid though. Let's see if this is like a salt lake, maybe? Oh, that's what it could be. It could be red salt crystals and these little lakes, these like cratered lakes here. Alright, let's settle down here. Right? Hold on, let's scan. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of depth to this too, even though it's right kind of here in its own little pocket. Alright, let's... See if we can find a landing spot. Whoa! Creatures galore! Look at all these creatures! Oh, of course! Of course, this is like the, the local watering grounds here. All these creatures have migrated down here to to hydrate. This water's pretty limited on the landmass, I would imagine. Look at this. This secret little little area here. This is really neat. Carnivorous cacti. Look, another creature. Seeks company. I bet it does. Contains water. Mmm, so even the rocks, the rocks here hold water, which explains why there's so little for the uh, flora and fauna. Of course, saw some birds, yep. Oh, those are, those are not birds. What is that? It's like a type of bat? Yeah, some form of feathered bat. A lot of uncommon creatures down here. Very neat. Okay, uh, let's see what these trees have to say about their living conditions. Semi-liquid bulbs from salt fusion. Uh huh. See, advanced age, regular root structure. Right. So that kind of lends credibility to what I'm saying. There's some form of uh, deep red salt that's made the water so. Uh, it's increased the salinity of the water so much that it's just not readily available for most things on this planet. Oh look, it's the uh, it's the blue hauler. I swear I just saw yeah, there it is. I was like, I would like to learn a word of the geck, please, and thank you. Alright. I can deal with the purple sky because again, it reminds me of like a perpetual sunrise or a sunset. All right, well, let's let's take a dip in the water and see what we get here. What did the weather say? Withered. Yeah, it's withered from all the salt. Oh, wow. 
For being inundated and saturated with salt, this, the clarity of this water is pristine. Uh, let's finish the scan, please. Thank you. That's some coral structure here. From a localized black hole. Um, okay. okay. I don't know what that means. Artificial. Mm. I don't know about any rock that's formed from a black hole. That seems... I want to say suspicious. Sketchy. I mean... Absolutely, your mileage may vary. We get so many images from, like, down in a, uh, on top of a mountain, or up on top of a mountain, we, we don't usually get them from down in a ravine. Looking at a lake, maybe. Be and that's why, because you're just looking at this, this sort of stone, stone wall. It's neat having the cliff right next to the water, though. All right, well, we've got one more planet in this system to see. And it's right here. Tulum 11. Looks like a yellow atmosphere. Crimson flora, sort of the teal, teal tropical looking water you would expect on a tropical planet. Let's, let's head over here. I'd like to see the land first. During the day. Not necessarily sunrise or sunset. A lot of rocky terrain in this system. Every planet seems to have some form of like rocky, jagged terrain features. No, oh, this one is like large rolling mountains though. Yeah, look at the terrain variation here. And those outcroppings. <laughs> That's different. Oh, sure, yeah. That's a vista. We'll sit and watch that flame. Lethal humidity outbreaks. Uh, that, to me, says... Yeah, there's some... There is some temperature stuff going on here. But look at the little beach with the water. That's where you lose the alien feel of this system. Is that the water? Pretty limited on salvaged technology. I wonder if we can get a scan of a building nearby, perhaps. Oh, well, that's a cool looking creature. Oh, yeah, it's like a falcon with a reptile wings and a tail. Found on planet Tulum 11, Ostridianthosa has adapted to the temperate climate and humid atmosphere. Nervous on the wing, they wheel and turn in endless loops, hoping to throw off any predators that might attempt to track them. Sharp scents and sharper claws allow them to tunnel swiftly through the earth in search of the tubers that form the bulk of their diet, and they're waxy all over. Hmm. Oh yeah, look! Trying to dive through the, the dirt and grab tubers. Interesting. I can't believe we just read that and then witnessed it. Okay. Rather interesting. There's a good bit of foliage here. 
I would say not necessarily forests, but absolutely lots of woods. And the mountains are pretty intense. They're not steep, but some of these are very, very, very tall comparatively. Look at that mountain over there. Yeah, I like the terrain here. Let's just... I don't want to land on the top of the mountain. It's hard to believe, honestly, that this is a tropical planet. It really, it really does just feel foreign. Like, there's nothing about this that feels familiar. High internal pressure feeds off buried carbon. Extreme salt content formed by polymerization. pretty shallow cave. Let's see what else we can learn about this planet. Conductive, calcified fauna. Hmm. I guess we'll check the damaged machinery. Yeah, yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. And that reminds me, we should probably put some of that in there. This feels like a hot planet, but I guess if it has lethal humidity outbreaks, that would make sense. Look at this grass, though. This isn't even like... I didn't even notice it first. I was too busy looking up to look down and to see... This isn't even normal grass. It's like mushrooms, or... I don't even know. Pyroclastic. Interesting. Ooh! A piece of candy! I'll take that. Another damage machinery. No, I think viscous fluids are going to be a bridge too far. If it's not living slime or better, we're just going to leave it. Sentinels are f enforcing. Wasn't there another... Oh, there is another buried technology module right down here. Wonderful. And a knowledge stone. This grass has a really... I don't even know if I can call it grass. It has a tremendously alien feel, though. The more I look at it now, I can't... I can't look away. Okay, it got some interesting planet options here in this system, sure. But I think, in the end... This system, for me, is not about its function, but more about its form. In that, I wanted something, well, not identical to Earth, you know? Not not the same as, as the last one. And I think we've done it. I think we've hit the mark. I think there's enough uh, things here for everybody, and we're close by, and... And I think it's safe to say... We'll be able to start colonizing soon. And really just see how much of this sector of Ice and Tam we can map and build upon. And just as much as, as possible, I imagine. Okay, well...
look at this look at this like rockiness here it's like fossils embedded in the surface and what are these littered on this mountainous section eroded from metal vapor oh well that explains the yellow sky yeah some kind of some kind of heavy metal being carried around in the air vaporized that would sort of, especially with the pyroclastic rocks, that would lend itself that, you know, potentially this planet had undergone its young volcanic, mass volcanic uh, stage relatively recently. Can we uh, keep looking to see what the fighters look like in this system? But not a lot of fighters. Um, it's a Gek system, after all. Look at the... Look at the size of our, our capital ship if we summon it. Oh my goodness! No, we're not going to summon it here, though. I think... question is, is the grass greener on the other side? Should we start to travel around to other systems? Or should we just stay here in earnest? We're still relatively close, so we're but we're just under a thousand light years away from the nebula capital. That's that's pretty good. I feel like we're very close to each other, um, but but close enough that close enough that we can swing by and collaborate, but also far enough away that if we expand in opposite directions, there's plenty of room. I mean, really, look look at this. We're not going to run out of of stars to map and explore. And if we do, we just keep expanding out and keep expanding out and keep expanding out and 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 yeah, exactly. You get the idea. Um There are a lot of stars in this area to pick from. And we're less than a thousand light years away. I think that's a respectable distance, um, given the scope of how many stars appear in a thousand light year bubble. Yeah. That's very good. That's very good indeed. Uh, let's see. I think the next step is going to be... Let's see, in the last system, I settled near the portal. I don't know if I necessarily want to settle next to the portal in this system. Here, let's let's go ahead and I mean there's there's a there's a benefit to settling next to the portal, but there's also a benefit to not factoring the portal into your into your calculations because If you don't care about the location of the portal, then then you can, you know, focus more on surveying and setting up near resources. But I guess that depends if you're going for form, function, a mixture of both. Emergency containment device. What is this? What? What is it containing? Oh my. We've got to get pictures of these. This is this is definitely a, a, a time to stop and, and stare into the fire for a minute and reflect. Question is, what is it containing?
trust shade seeds, a relatively common plant suffering from a relatively uncommon mutation. Spores of that size are not normal. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, sure. In the meantime, let's head on over to our capital planet over here. And this will be where it begins. I think... I don't think I'm going to put down a base computer yet. I'm going to mull over my options. Where I want the base, what's important to me. I think that's the right call. I sort of want a view of the moon. So I have a lot of requirements in mind. I want to really take my time with this one, as far as figuring it out. And I think we're going to be more for form than function at the capital, which I think would make sense. Alright, well that being said, we'll call in a capital ship here. And just go ahead and dock. want to do work on the capital ship. Mm. I don't know. I know that I want to build an Exocraft summoning station, so we're going to do that, and then we, we might just do that quickly and then press on without doing anything else. I would rather work on building on the planet and building on the capital ship as we get further away and start doing uh, deep space exploration. So for now, let's... yeah, here we go. Get one of these. Oh, look, we need warp cells for this room. It's a thing of beauty. And I didn't think we'd use those. Look at that. Excellent. And now we can summon our exocraft anywhere our ship is. Let's go ahead and sell these trust shade seeds. Still two salvaged frigate modules. Gosh, I would I would so just love to get the last two. Hmm. Yep, that's all we need. That's all we need. And then look, each one of these adds 50 light years to the range, these color. So even though even though we don't need all of them, it makes me wonder if there wouldn't be a benefit for it. I mean, eventually we can expand out our technology and our inventory and everything else with bulkheads, so... I think what we need to do, if I'm, if I'm really self-analyzing this, is we need to call a derelict freighter to this system, even though I've pretty much, I'm like 99% sure this is going to be our home system. Let's just see what sort of technology module we get from this system, and, uh, yeah, just, oh, you know what, we'll for science that, but I think, honestly, before we go and before I head off and get all wrapped up in that, that's actually where we're going to have to wrap up this episode. Look at the time, how it flies when we have fun. That being said, until next time, take care.